Dear colleagues, welcome to our annual press conference. Now, we're here in the Porsche Museum at the heart of our brand in Stuttgart, Zuffenhausen. Today, we're looking at the most recent past, the present and the future of Porsche. Tradition, modernly interpreted. This is, by the way, what this 911 Targa GTS stands for. Now, a word about the agenda for today. Our CEO, Oliver Blume, and Lutz Meschke, his deputy, and our CFO will talk you through this annual press conference here today. Oliver Blume will give an overview on the events and the KPIs on the year 2021, and he takes you along to take a look at the Porsche strategy, how we plan to position ourselves in future as a successful sports car producer. Lutz Meschke will give an insight into the financial figures in more detail, and he will give an overview into the digital transformation at Porsche and at our investment strategy. Your questions you may send in up front to APC 2022 at Porsche.de annual Porsche press conference. So that's the URL where you can send in your questions. That's all from me up front. But now let's have a look at clip. Let's roll the clip. If your dreams are keeping you awake and you take your chance, if it's not fame that drives you, but that one moment and a single target, no matter how far it is to reach, if you believe in changing the world. When you give everything, but everything is still not good enough, and yet you still follow your inner voice. When they say forget it, but that is exactly what you cannot do. Because dreams drive you. Then you are one of us. Because we too were born from a dream. What about your dream? Ferry Porsche hat seinen Traum Wirklichkeit werden. And Ferry Porsche made his dream come true. And Porsche was born. And this continues to remain our motivation. We make dreams come true. A very warm welcome also from my side. Nice to have you here. For almost 75 years, we at Porsche have been building sports cars. We delight our customers with fascinating products, focusing on technology, innovation and sustainability, and with a clear stance. This is the core of the Porsche brand. 2021 was another year of major challenges, but at the same time, it was a very successful year, the most successful year in the history of Porsche. We delivered so many cars as never ever before. In terms of revenue and earnings, we reached a new record. Right in the middle of the biggest transformation which our industry has ever experienced, we have been operating and grown in a highly profitable manner. And our goal to be CO2 neutral on balance across the entire value chain by 2030, we will continue to have our sights firmly set on it. This is a strong performance, very typical of Porsche. However, there are many more important issues these days. There is the fate of people in Ukraine. There's the concern for our colleagues and for peace in the world as a whole. We hope that fighting will come to an end very soon and that there will be a return to diplomacy. 
because we are convinced a lasting solution can solely and exclusively be built on the basis of international law. And of course, we want to help as well. Therefore, we are supporting organizations which help all those many people who are suffering hardship without any fault of their own. And through our initiatives, Porsche is helping, our employees too are making their contribution. We at Porsche adhere to our values. We have always considered our success to be an obligation toward the society, but also toward our customers and toward our employees. Therefore, we want to demonstrate how, despite the current situation, we want to lead Porsche into the future, doing so with ambition and at the same time in a stable and flexible manner, and how we turned 2021 into such a successful year. We set the course in this direction early on. Today's good results are based on the right decisions made in the last few years. We are courageous, innovative and proactive, typical for Porsche. This great success of the Taycan is a case in point. The vehicle concept has thrilled our customers and the trade media, all electric and 100% Porsche. And we will continue to push ahead. Porsche's future is electric. Against this backdrop, we set clear goals. Consistent electrification of our products. For instance, launching a new all-electric 718. Expansion of the charging infrastructure. Setting up exclusive Porsche charging stations. Investment in our own battery cell and battery systems. And continued development of battery technology using our own module production system. I will give you more details later. Later. Before that, let us have a brief look back. You know, since time immemorial, the enthusiasm of our customers has been spurring us on, customers loyal all over the world, and in 2021 too, we launched fascinating new products onto the market for them. The success story of the Taycan has added further chapters. With the Taycan Cross Turismo, the GTS and the Sport Turismo, this young model family has grown substantially. Sales have more than doubled year on year. And in some markets, about half of the Taycan customers are new to Porsche. The 911 too is more popular than ever before. The number of incoming orders has never been as high. And no car embodies a brand, our brand core as much as the new 911 GT3 with its incredible performance. With the Cayenne Turbo GT, we transferred the GT idea to the SUV segment for the first time. The most powerful Cayenne with its unique driving dynamics is the spearhead of this successful model lineup. The 718 GT4, as an RS for the first time, is also new, extremely agile, so very typical of Porsche, and now for the first time with a 500 horsepower flat six engine, pure driving fun. And last but not least, the Mission R, our vision of motorsports of the future, all electric, high performance, 1000 HP power and top speeds of more than 300 kph. And there's something which always delights us in particular, when we can thrill the experts as much as our loyal customers and fans. And this is exactly what we succeeded in achieving in 2021. In Germany alone, we received more than 20 awards for our products from the trade media. Among them, three awards in the Reader's Choice Best Cars category of Auto Motor Sport and a Golden Steering Wheel from the two papers, Auto Build and Build em Sonntag. Add to that numerous international awards. To rekindle this fascination for our products every year, this is an incentive for us. We demand the highest standards from our products and from ourselves. In terms of sustainability, we want to be a role model and a trailblazer. In a major study, the magazine Capital and the market research company Statista determined the climate awareness of among of German companies. Among all car makers, Porsche comes out best and has been ranked fourth in total among more than 2,000 investigated companies. This makes us proud and motivates us to become 
become even better. As a partner of society, we wish to assume responsibility for sustainable action, for secure jobs and for the community. We commit ourselves, helping people who are not doing so well in their lives, regionally, at our locations and worldwide in those markets in which we are active. In a targeted and coordinated manner, we support activities in the fields of education, culture and sport, of social affairs and sustainability. In 2021, providing donations in the amount of 2 million euros in total, Porsche AG also supported activities of the Ferry Porsche Foundation. The foundation worked on 135 projects in Germany and abroad last year. To push digitalization in our schools was the goal of the popular Ferry Porsche Challenge. This year, the sponsorship contest is in a new round and is all about inclusion in sports. People are center stage at Porsche. This has always been our guiding principle, also as an employer. The number of employees has again increased slightly. Nearly 37,000 people are working at Porsche and they enjoy it with pleasure and great dedication as our yearly mood barometers show. Moreover, studies like Trendense or Universum showed again, Porsche is an enormously attractive employer for university graduates and young professionals. Among engineers and economists, we are holding top positions. Among IT graduates, we are the most popular employer among car makers according to the Universum study. So so, again, against this backdrop, we succeed in winning over the best talents for Porsche. We are convinced we will achieve our ambitious goals only with the right people in the right positions. Our success at Porsche is a big team effort. The whole team has again demonstrated team spirit, pioneering spirit and devotion, hard blood. And right in the middle of the coronavirus and semiconductor crises, they set new milestones for Porsche. In 2021, for the first time, we delivered more than 300,000 vehicles to our customers all over the world. This amounts to 11% more than during the year before. And this means we clearly grew more than the market as a whole. However, volume is not of paramount importance to Porsche. Fact is, quality and exclusivity are paramount of each and every vehicle. Our electrification strategy is making progress faster than planned. Of all vehicles which we delivered worldwide in 2021, nearly every fourth one was an electric model, in Europe even almost 40% a sharp jump compared to the year before. The proportion of all electric vehicles was 14% worldwide. This means we have already delivered more all-electric vehicles than hybrid vehicles. At 33.1 billion euros, our revenue reached a new record. And this is true for our operating profit as well, at 5.3 billion euros. Now, this translates into a return of 16%. Therefore, we exceeded our strategic target and set standards in the car industry worldwide. And we demonstrate. Even under difficult general conditions, Porsche firmly stays on track. Surely, all this time, well, also this time, we are only too happy to explain the whole story to you in detail. And as always, this is why Lutz Metzke is here at my side. Lutz, the stage is yours. You can see, ladies and gentlemen, that Oliver and myself, we are very moved and burdened by the suffering that innocent people just 1,500 kilometers away from here have to endure. Now, we can very gratified with the figures of last fiscal year, but in all our joy over the success, we are also asking ourselves, what's the meaning of all these KPIs such as revenue, earnings and return on revenue when compared to such values as health, safety and peace? 
Eher eine kleine. I'd say it's a rather small significance. Now all the same, I will now present you our financial figures in due detail. And to summarize them in one sentence, thanks to our rock-solid cost structure, we raked in a very strong result in 2021, one that we can be proud of. Now, despite all the challenges, we achieved a new record figure in sales revenue. Our 33.1 billion euros for 2021, we outperformed the previous best from the preceding year. And it equals an increase by 4.4 billion euros or respectively an increase by 15%. Now, the more significant KPIs for Porsche, however, are earnings and the return on revenue. Because they really reflect the excellent earnings prowess of our brand. And they demonstrate our value-added growth and the robustness of our successful business model, even under such adverse conditions as the semiconductor scarcity. Porsche Group's operative earnings improved by 27% to 5.3 billion euros, and that is 1.1 billion euros more than in 2020. And this results in an operating return on revenue of 16.0%. It's a figure which, well, our worldwide industry envies us for. Now, the lion's share in this was generated by our automobile group with an increased earnings by 25% to 5 billion euros. And What's more, in the vehicle business, net liquidity also gained significantly. As of a reporting date, it amounted to 5 billion euros, which is a gain of 2 billion euros over the preceding year. The net cash flow in the automobile group also performed very strongly. In 2021, it improved by 67% to 3.7 billion euros. And this KPI also amply demonstrates that Porsche is really superbly positioned and our core business is developing very positively. Demand for fascinating vehicles is as strong as never before and outperforms the general trend on the global vehicle markets. Our attractive product lineup convinces around the globe. In 2021, Porsche delivered over 300,000 cars to customers. And compared with the previous year, this is a substantial gain of 11% and it is for our brand a new historic all-time high. And what's more, our sales markets are well balanced out across the globe. We sell in Europe, in America and in China, each around 30% of our vehicles respectively. Our strongest market by volume remains China. At almost 96,000 deliveries, we recorded a plus of 8% over the year 2020. And this is well above the growth trend seen in the total car market, as well as above the growth in the premium segment. Porsche is in North America. In North America, Porsche grew strongly as well, and especially in the United States. In the States, the number of deliveries climbed by 22% to more than 70,000 units. A very positive development was also evident in Europe. In Germany alone, Porsche managed to increase new vehicle deliveries by 9% to roughly 29,000 units. Das weltweit am stärksten nachgefragte Now, the worldwide uh, strongest model that saw the strongest demand was the Macan with over 88,000 deliveries. Followed on the second place was the Cayenne with 83,000 units. The strongest increase, though, was recorded by the Porsche Taycan, our first fully electric sports car. In 2021, over 41,000 
cars were handed over to customers, and that is more than twice the number than in the year before. This success shows that people are thrilled by our electrification strategy. And we can say today, we've managed to transfer the core values of a traditional rich brand into the age of electric mobility. And this is only the start of our journey, as Oliver Blume will outline to you later. And even our icon, the Porsche 911, continues to enjoy high demand. With over 38,000 units delivered, that is actually more than one year of deliveries for the 911 ever achieved. And we also said the Panamera rumped up its numbers to 30,000 units. Maintaining a high stable level with 21,000 units is the 718 model line. Now, in addition to our products, the high and sustainable profitability of Porsche is, of course, based on our strong operating cash flow and our superbly healthy cost structures. Here, our ambitious 2025 earnings program is making great progress. It's a program that we kicked off in 2018, and now we are seeing it at the halfway line. But already now it is clear that it is going to be a complete success in two respects. Namely, it will substantially support our earnings and significantly increase our innovative prowess. This means over 3,000 concrete suggestions are submitted by our employees that could contribute to this success. And many of these suggestions are already in the process of being implemented. And this makes this earnings program so unique in our industry, because it is not just a pure savings program, it is an innovation program. And we are taking a thorough look at the processes throughout the company and then make ourselves fit and ready for the future. Simply cutting costs would not be enough for us. And so, we're developing new business ideas and we increase sales. And this is all thanks to a highly motivated team in all departments and units who never rest on their laurels from the past. And for this, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all the employees. You have done another great job in 2021. Our subsidiaries also played a major role in the positive earnings performance. Well above, our Porsche Financial Services, because in the preceding fiscal year, they made their biggest contribution to date to earnings in the history of the Porsche Group. And for this, I'll come back later. Now, our growing exposure and commitment beyond our core business is also already paying off positively towards our earnings. To date, we have invested a total of 717 million euros in shareholdings, takeovers and risk capital activities. The most prominent example among them is our partnership with Mate Rimac and his up-and-coming enterprise. Here, Porsche already started to take out the shareholding in Remats in 2018. Now, that was a time when many did not believe in this young, small company. But we made a bold and courageous investment at the time and thereafter continually extended our commitment. So that by November 2021, this strategic investment story reached its, what I would call a preliminary high point, with the joint venture Bugatti Remats starting operating activities. Its shareholders are the Remats Group with a 55% share and the Porsche AG with a 45% share. Now this step sees Porsche, Bugatti and Remats open up a new and exciting chapter in the history of automotive industry. Oliver Blume, I myself are representing the Porsche AG in said company's supervisory board. And we are all agreed that we really look forward to the continuation of this breathtakingly speedy success story. In 2022, the Remets Group will recruit its 2,000 employee and the construction of the forward-facing Remets campus is set to be completed in 2023. 
What's more, the Remax Group is in the midst of concluding the next financing round with a mid three digit million sum. And this with a substantially increased enterprise valuation. Now, these positive figures allow us to look ahead with great confidence. A year ago, I predicted here that Porsche would emerge stronger from the Corona crisis. And today, I'm proud to say that we did not promise too much at the time, also because we continue to invest resolutely and sustainably in the future, despite all the challenges. Yes, we are facing challenges both economically and politically over the next few months. And yet, we are sticking and staying the course to our strategic goals, which have been firmly anchored for years, of securing an operating return on sales of at least 15% over the long term. Our task force has already taken the initial measures to support our result here. And this way, we aim to ensure that we can continue to meet our high earnings targets. And the extent to which we succeed in doing so also, of course, depends on external challenges over which we have no control. However, the internal conditions have been set and met. Strategically, operatively and financially, Porsche is excellently positioned. And with that, I hand back to you, Oliver. Well, Lutz, these are really good prospects, despite the current challenges. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, a year ago, here at this venue, we explained to you our Porsche strategy 2030, our guiding principles to make Porsche even more sustainable and more customer-oriented, and in doing so, generating high profits. Just looking at the figures which Lutz Meschke just showed you, we can note. We are fully on track. We are tackling the transformation courageously, flexibly and proactively. We are shaping the transformation. We've been thoroughly working on the costs. On our results, show program is paying off, and I can say the family, and this is our strong product basis. Sportiness stands for products like the GT models, always very closely aligned with motorsports. Hard blood. These are the lifestyle products like our heritage editions. And the Porsche pioneering spirit, future products with electric drive and a high level of digitalization. We focus on everything that has always made Porsche strong in the past and has distinguished us from others. Unmistakable design. One of these features is the typical Porsche fly line, unique, timeless and iconic. Whoever sees a Porsche knows that this is a Porsche. Quality must comply with high standards. Here, we rely on our decade-long experience and nevertheless always want to take things a step further. The performance, of course, motorsports was and will always be our yardstick. And then, comfortable and sporty travel. Here, we specially focus on fast and comfortable charging. As a matter of course, an incomparable driving experience. The driver experience, as we call it, invariably with highest comfort, innovative technology and absolute everyday practicality. And last but not least, sustainability. Consistently thought through from beginning to end, from development, material, production and use to recycling of our products. Sustainability across the entire company is part and parcel of our strategy 2030. In this context, we always focus on six strategy fields. These are decarbonization, circular economy and diversity of perspectives, and in addition, the fields of partner of the society, sustainable supply chain and management and transparency of our company. A year ago, at this point, we announced a clear goal. In 2030, we want to be CO2 neutral on balance across the entire value chain, and we stick to it. We want to be role model and pioneer. This begins with ourselves 
at our major locations. Here in Zuffenhausen, we are operating at CO2 neutrality on balance, like in Weissach and Leipzig. We even mandate our direct suppliers to use renewable energy resources. But we take things even further. The key source of CO2 emissions of today's cars with an internal combustion engine is their use phase. Therefore, Porsche consistently relies on the switch to electromobility. In this context, we also wish to consider the origin of energy our vehicles use to drive along. Therefore, we direct our activities to include mining sustainable energy resources like, for example, solar and wind energy plants. In addition, we, against the backdrop of the number of vehicles registered, consider the development of so-called e-fuels as an ideal complement to electromobility. These synthetic fuels have the potential to propel vehicles fitted with an internal combustion engine in a nearly CO2-neutral manner. But not only that, we also see our commitment as a pioneering effort for the shipping and aviation industries. At the end of 2020, we announced that we will cooperate with international partners and take part in building a pilot facility for such e-fuels in Chile. In the meantime, construction work has been going on for six months. Production is expected to start this year. All this demonstrates sustainability is a success factor for us and core of our strategy. Like with all our activities related to sustainability, we attach great importance to independent evaluation. This is the reason why we have the rating agency ISS ESG evaluate us on a regular basis. Porsche again received the prime status from ISS ESG and managed to raise the prior year evaluation from C plus to B minus. We are actively driving the transformation in our industry. In other fields too, we want to be pioneers. Together with our partner Custom Cells, we founded the Cellforce Group. Here we are working on developing high-performance battery cells. And high-performance battery systems in particular are in the focus of our partnership with Rematz. However, in our activities we also look beyond our core business and we extensively invest in the digitalization of products and processes. Concerning details, I think we best ask Lutz Meschke again. Well, thanks, Oli. Ladies and gentlemen, now the second part of my presentation shall be dedicated to aligning the strategy to you with which we want to make ourselves fit for the future. Firstly, by the consistent digitalization of all our activities. And secondly, by exploring and opening up new innovations and business fields. Now, how we do that in detail? I'll explain to you with a few examples now. The world around us is changing at a breathtaking speed and Porsche is changing with it. Because we have to, but above all, because we want to. Now, because the pioneering spirit has always been part of our DNA. And because we see it as a huge opportunity to be proactive shapers in the future of mobility. Now that's why we are driving forward resolutely the decarbonization, electrification as well as the digital transformation. We do so with fresh ideas, innovative technologies and new digital business models that are increasingly contributing to the group's earnings. A clear strategy shows us the way here. And it helps us to stay on course for success in that transformation process. Now, in the past year, we made considerable progress along this path. One focal point was and still is the massive expansion of our IT team, in Porsche AG, as well as in our subsidiaries such as Porsche Digital, Porsche Engineering and MHP. This has enabled us to increase our IT and digitization capacities worldwide to over 5,000 employees. But in the face of global competition, powerful software makes all the difference.
Mit unserer Digitalisierungsoffensive. Yeah. With our digitization offensive, we want first of all make processes in the company even faster, leaner, and more flexible. And secondly, we want to offer our customers outstanding products that inspire them with their impressive software and networking. And thirdly, we want to drive forward the digitization of our customer interfaces. Yeah. To meet the particular demands and requirements of Porsche and our customers for the digital transformation, we follow a two-pronged strategy. On the one hand, we are closely cooperating with the most successful high-tech companies of the world. And on the other hand, we are relying on our in-house and independent expertise, competencies and developments. Yes. Together with our subsidiary MHP, we are developing a business model called Industrial Cloud Solutions, or in short, ICS. Now, to this end, we're implementing our leading production and logistics expertise in software. And with this ICS, customers from the industrial sector are ramping up their efficiency and thereby benefit from a sustainable and resource-saving production. The Porsche Digital company is developing digital premium solutions for our customers. Now, one exciting example is currently being developed in collaboration with our sales team. It is our own Porsche NFT platform. Now, an NFT is a non-fungible token, as a kind of unmistakable digital value voucher. And our platform shall be used to sell original Porsche NFTs. So, you can look forward to highly emotional products all on a Porsche level. Because even in the digital world, it holds true that our strongest asset is our exclusive brand. Now, a key technology in digital, tra digital transformation is, of course, artificial intelligence. Now, we are driving this topic forward on a wide range of our areas, in vehicle development, production, but also in our day-to-day -day internal work processes where AI applications help us automate routine tasks and also make and take decisions. In short, our digitalization strategy is transferring the unique Porsche feeling from the physical world into the digital age and into the virtual world, respectively. Courage and the pioneering spirit as befits Porsche. Now, to drive forward the digital transformation, we want to win over the best talents for our strongly growing team at Porsche IT. We want to win them over with our exciting products, our agile teams, our open corporate culture and our international orientation. So, my message to the most able IT heads around the world is clear. If you are burning to develop the coolest and smartest digital products around the most legendary sports cars of the world, hey, you are most welcome here at Porsche and its subsidiaries. And I'm really speaking here to all highly motivated women and men around the globe, because Porsche Digital now has already nine locations worldwide, Palo Alto, Atlanta, Barcelona, Zagreb and Tel Aviv, in Shanghai and Beijing, in Ludwigsburg and in Berlin. And with this kind of global presence, we really achieve two objectives. Firstly, we can work closely with local customers on site to develop tailored products that are in demand locally and integrated into regional digital ecosystems. Secondly, we can engage the best IT minds in these different locations. Because, mind you, we're not talking about an extended workbench here. The on-site teams develop their products independently. For example, the Porsche Digital China. Here, independent applications are developed for the special wishes of local customers, and we do that with success.
We have also but we also have successful subsidiaries that have been around a little longer, of course. These include the Porsche Lifestyle Group with its Porsche Design brand. Established in 1972 by Professor F. A. Porsche, the Porsche Design is celebrating its 50th birthday this year, and it's doing so with unique and limited special edition models. Yeah. Another example in kind are the Porsche Financial Services. Our financial services subsidiary extended its range of offers very pinpointedly in 2021. It covers now the entire mobility spectrum, whether it's short-time rentals, subscription services, all the way through to the classic leasing and financing business activities. In this way, we are now offering our customers a host of attractive possibilities all from a single source with which they can fulfill their dream of driving a Porsche. Now, the Porsche Financial Services today already cater to over 300,000 leasing and financing contracts worldwide with the business volume of around 9.4 billion euros worldwide. In 2021, more than 40% of all new Porsche vehicles were leased or financed via the Porsche Financial Services. In China, actually, this figure was clearly above 50%. Now, all of this made a significant contribution to the strong growth of our brand. But let's now turn to our new business models. In the future, we intend to use them to secure our success also beyond our core business. And here, we're really pushing the pace hard. The latest example is here our involvement in the electric bicycle market. Now, we made a strategic expansion to our international portfolio of partners and are planning to develop a forward-looking Porsche electric bike generation. Our latest move was to take over a 20% stake in Fazur, with the option to increase that share all the way up to 100%. Now, this Fazur is an innovative manufacturer of electric bicycle drive system that is a perfect fit for Porsche. Because, I mean, Fazur is Bavarian vernacular means just really put metal to the pedal. And I am convinced that we will have a lot of fun in the future market of electric bicycles, which is growing strongly and offers huge potential. But let us surprise you here. And what's more, we're dealing with many other future topics. I mean, Oliver Blumer has already mentioned one example, namely our partner Custom Sales. Here with them, we founded the Cell Force Group. And together, we want to develop and produce high performance battery cells that should be ready for serious production by 2024. And, as you know, we've been active in the venture capital business since 2016. And here, our clear strategy says, with our involvement in startup companies, we want to strengthen our agility, innovative strength and future viability. And we want to tap into new business areas and target groups. All this opens up new horizons for us and keeps our company young and powerful. Yes, our risk capital unit, the Porsche Ventures Company, has, for example, invested in the Chinese startup iMaker. It's a company that is China's leading provider of digital ecosystems and virtual influencers. Here, behind me, you can see the example, or one example, of II. This is a purely virtual influencer that is already enthusing many youngsters in China today. Now, for some, this may sound like a look into the crystal ball, but I am convinced that Porsche is well advised to look closely at the life and surroundings of our customers of tomorrow. And to this end, we are treading new paths and are testing new limits. Because, I mean, in view of the upcoming leaps and bounds in engineering and technology, it does make also sense to think in totally new dimensions. With that kind of perspective into the future, we are consistently treading in the footsteps of our corporate tradition. Because Porsche has always been thinking ahead 
and been a pioneer. Our total venture capital portfolio at the moment comprises 48 investments with a total financial investment of roughly 250 million euros. As of the 31st of December 2021, our investment portfolio recorded a value appreciation of around 75 million euros net. So, let me summarize our activities into the issues of the future the following way. We've got a broad basis and are focused. We're open for almost everything and never lose sight of our Porsche Strategy 2030. We supplement and strengthen our successful core business, which always follows our objective that Porsche strives to always build the best and most desirable sports cars. And we do so at maximum efficiency. So, let me wrap it up with a word that is currently marking the headlines, of course. That is, I mean, what am I thinking about the potential IPO of Porsche? You know how I feel. I very much welcome the decision to review such an IPO. Because, I mean, speaking quite generally, the capital market appreciates homogenous and focused business units. Large corporations are often undervalued because the single value of its units can never really be mapped one-on-one -on -one by and on the capital markets. But the higher a company is valued, the better is its financing opportunities and its leeway for action. And with alliances with, for example, tech players, it does help to have swift and flexible positioning. These kind of alliances are therefore gaining more and more in significance. Yeah, I cannot really disclose and say any more about these principal statements, because our owner, the Volkswagen AG, has announced that by the end of the summer, they will provide information on the status of their reviews. Until then, we simply all need to be patient. Above all, though, I hope that by then, the war in the Ukraine will have come to an end. Because peace is so much more important than any IPO. Now, what is certain is that Porsche is superbly positioned. It's innovative, courageous, lean and agile, profitable and financially strong. And that's why we really look into the future. What we have in store and plan for the near future, well, for this I back, hand back over to Oliver Blume. Oliver, over to you. Last autumn at the IAA in Munich, we presented the Mission R, a groundbreaking concept study for motorsports as well as for the development of new volume cars at Porsche. Here, we continue to favor a mix of the drive systems, highly efficient internal combustion engines, powerful hybrids and all-electric vehicles. In motorsport too, we also mirror this development in classic GT racing with our new LMDH hybrid racing car, which we are currently testing and in the all-electric Formula E. 
and we are also showing what electromobility made by Porsche looks like. We show where we, as Porsche, see our positioning in this new age. Our targets? In 2025, around half of all new Porsches sold should be electrified, i.e. fully electric or plug-in hybrids. In 2030, the share of all new vehicles with a fully electric drive should be more than 80%. For the all-electric Macan, preparations are currently underway. To this end, we want to hybridize the 911 in the form of a very sporty variant as we know it from motorsport. The racing track traditionally is the birthplace of new technologies. We transfer these to the series. Think of the 919 hybrid, with which we won the 24 hours of Le Mans three times in a row and which was the inspiration for the Taycan with its 800-volt technology. The Mission R will also be an inspiration for the series, for our 718 mid-engine sports car. In the middle of the decade, we want to electrify this series, and we want to offer the 718 exclusively fully electric. The all-electric 718 is a most progressive development of the mid-engine design. And, you know, we still are sticking to our well-known principle of identical parts in the new generation as well. This means that the 718 and the 911 can continue to be produced here in Zuffenhausen on the two-door line. Our claim is clear. The 718 should be the best purely electric sports car in the B segment. An essential factor for the success of electromobility is the charging infrastructure. As a founder, partner and part of Ionity, we are driving the expansion of the fast charging network in Germany and Europe. By 2025, the number of Ionity sites is planned to increase to 1,000. The perspective is to increase availability to more than 7,000 charging points. In addition, we plan to develop our own Porsche charging infrastructure. The high-power charging locations exclusively for Porsche customers are to supplement the Ionity network. We will set up these sites along main traffic routes and motorways in Europe. The plan is to have up to 12 charging points per station, offering charging power of 350 kilowatts and more. And we plan to open the first station in southern Germany Germany at the turn of the year. And we can say, in this time and age, the battery has been given a new significance. It is the combustion chamber, if you like, of the future. We are going to produce these battery cells, but we also think of more optimum integration of the battery into the vehicle. We therefore set up our own development of facilities for battery modules. This is to be set up by the middle of this year. This means competencies will be available in this important strategy field. And this means we are in a very good position for the future. We've got a highly solid as well as a flexible core business which uh, we can use to generate wonderful results. And the basis are our exclusive brand and a fascinating product portfolio and a value framework, if you like, which places sustainability center stage with everything that we're doing economically, ecologically and socially. Our focus is on the development of future technologies. We therefore are looking at core technologies, battery cells and systems, and we look at enablers for the infrastructure and e-fuels and also digital technologies, like for our e Porsche ecosystem or the digital driver experience in our cars. Now, let me sum up briefly. 2021 has shown, even in tempestuous times, our business model has proven to be weather Proof, if you like, we achieve strong results. And having this very successful development in our minds, the Volkswagen Group decided to investigate a possible public offering of Porsche AG. We welcome this step taken by the Volkswagen Group. 
Porsche and Volkswagen will be able to continue in the future to benefit from common synergies. At the same time, we expect a large development potential for Porsche. And we will stay on track with our strategy even in dynamic times. It is the combination of what Porsche means, sportiness, innovation, sustainability and profitability. Porsche has remained Porsche because Porsche has changed time and again. Porsche is synonymous with people who pursue their dreams. Once again, here we go. Know the name, know the flow. Turn me up a little more. I'm setting traps home alone. Give me that. Where the city at? Nitty gritty. This is gonna be great. Not afraid. Get the fuck away. I used to hate. Look at what you made. When it all goes down, I'm gonna run this in. Well, thank you to Oliver Blumer and Lutz Meschke for their detailed insights into the world of Porsche. Dear colleagues, the annual press conference is, of course, as you used to, available in the Porsche newsroom. In addition, you can find videos, stills and audio files available in the Porsche newsroom, where you will also find our new annual report and sustainability report as a microsite with many of new functions like the visualization of graphics. Now we're at the end of the annual press conference and any and all journalists who've registered can stay online in the stream and we continue after a brief break at 10.30 with the international Q&A session. To all the others I say thank you for listening and stay healthy and see you soon. Goodbye.